the F fly. Really great little pattern that can cover all the four major groups, um, depending on you can tie it all the way down, you know, from like a 12 to a 20. Um, it can cover caddis and stonefly, mayfly, and even midge. Um, so let's get started. Uh, I'm going to use some kind of a gray olive, uh, probably hard to see that color anyway, thread. Uh, this is uh, Benecchi, or Benecchi, however you want to pronounce it. 12 watt thread. Start my thread up at the eye and make a thread base. Trim away the waist. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is just grab a little bit of iron gray uni thread. This is a 6 aught size. This is going to be my ribbing. You don't have to do ribbing on this fly, but where the body's going to be pheasant tail, I, I'd like to reinforce it. And I'm going to keep it light instead of using wire. I'm going to use thread. So. Come on. There we go. All right, catch that on. Now I'm going to grab some olive pheasant tail fibers. You can use different colors and different body materials, but this one's going to be pheasant tail. I'm going to grab about a half a dozen of those, maybe, eh, this is a size 16, maybe I'll just use four or five to keep a nice slim body on there. Pull it out 90 degrees from the stem like so, and tear it away. All right, with the tips in line, for the most part, I clipped them off because I had one that was a little long, um, but you're going to be tying it in tips towards the eye. And just make a catch and pull those back. And bring that up nice and neat. Up to about an eye, maybe two eye widths back. Okay, and then just wrap your pheasant tail. Each wrap touching and maybe slightly overlapping the other. Okay. And tie off. And trim away. Okay, I'm going to make a couple nice turns in here just to make a nice smooth transition. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and counter wrap the uni thread. I'm going to twist and cord it up. As I go along. You can't even necessarily see it that well, but going to reinforce the fly and make it last a little bit longer since pheasant tail is fairly brittle. Okay, there we go. Next thing to go on is a couple CDC plumes. I'm going to use two for this size 16 here. Just lie them curved side together with the tips matching and the stems right on top of each other. Take a second to get it right. Once you get it lined up, stroke all the fibers back and make yourself a nice little wing. And You want the curved part of the wing to be down if you can help it. Oops. This one's acting up a little bit. 
Just take your time, be patient. Okay, measure it to the back of the hook shank there. Tension loop, make a catch. And take a look at how things are laying. That'll work. Trim away your waist. Cover up the butt ends and form a nice little head. There we go. That wing's laying nice and low with the body, that's good. And then come in and whip finish. Trim away. And that's it, that's all there is to the F-Fly. Like I said, you can even use synthetic materials for the body or anything else um, that you want to use, but uh, this is an olive dyed pheasant tail. I've ribbed it to reinforce it a little bit with some thread and you've got your uh, CDC wing. And as you can see, that will lay down um, real nice and represent a numerous amount of bugs that, that land on the water out there. Um, like I said, caddis, stoneflies, uh, small moths. You can stretch it to even a mayfly and a midge um, just landing on the water. And it's just a nice, easy profile, something that's quick to tie. And it's proven to catch fish all over the world. I've seen it on a lot of different videos and in books. So I thought I'd share this simple pattern with you. Thanks for watching.